When we calculate confidence intervals, you will notice that we use not the full sample size, but the sample size minus one in the denominator of the formula. You will see this written as n minus one. Why do we use n minus one when we calculate confidence intervals? To understand that, we're gonna to need to discuss the degrees of freedom to vary. Confidence intervals and t-tests require the standard error of the mean. The formula for standard error of the mean is sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. In a perfect universe, we would have perfect knowledge. We have data for the entire population. We always know the population mean, and we could use it to directly calculate the population standard deviation. But in our world, the perfect universe is long ago and far, far away. We're going to learn to use z-tests and t-tests. The z-test approximates using a normal distribution, which is exactly what we would have in a perfect universe. We will call this option one, in which sigma is known. And how is sigma known? Because it has been directly calculated from a known population mean. Because we have data about every member of the population, we directly measure the mean of the population, and then we use that mean to calculate the standard deviation of the population. We subtract the mean from every raw score, square the differences, add them up, divide by population size, and then take the square root. Sigma is known because it can be directly calculated using the population mean. But this is not a perfect universe, never has been. We do not have population data. For this next illustration, I'm going to need a population that would be utterly unknown to you. And so I'm going to use the height of the average Martian. I will assume that you know nothing about Martians that you do not have a favorite Martian. But you do have access to the top tier academic journal about Martians, the Martian Chronicles Journal. Reading the MCJ, we learn that the population of Martians has been measured and that the height of the average Martian is six. Six what, you ask? Well, that's easy. Six mahu, that's Martian height units. Trust me, it's science fiction. You are doing some Martian research. You are going to randomly select Martians to measure their height. We will use the population mean to calculate the variance in your sample so we can calculate the standard error of the mean. We begin simply by randomly selecting a single Martian. We discover that his height is eight mahu. He's a little taller than average. Because we know the height of the average Martian, we can plug in the mean of six and determine that the variability of Martian height is as much as two units. But if we increase our sample size, we can decrease our average error estimate. By selecting a second Martian, whose height is five, we can again calculate the average error and we now know that the average error is as much as 1.58. This math is possible because we know the population mean. But what if we don't know the population mean? Well, that answer is simple. We could use a point estimator. We already know that what is true of a sample should be true of the population from which it was drawn. Therefore, we could use the mean of our sample as a point estimator to stand in for the unknown population mean. This is option two, the circumstance in which the population standard deviation is unknown. Because we do not know the population mean, we cannot use it to calculate sigma. Instead, we are going to use the sample mean as a point estimator for the population mean in the formula for standard deviation. Now that may seem simple, but I have a bad feeling about this. Now allow me to illustrate with a different population about which I assume you have no knowledge. Robots. Robot height has not been well studied. 
and therefore we don't know the average robot height. We're going to have to estimate the average robot height from a sample that we draw. As we did with Martians, we will select a single robot at random and measure her height. This one is 8 Rohu. That's robot height units. Based on our single raw score, we calculate the mean, which is simple. We now have an estimate for a population mean based on the available data. The average robot height is 8. That is our point estimate, which we plug in to the variance formula instead of the true population mean. And now you see the problem. Because we are estimating the population mean, we end up with zero variability. And this is where we can begin discussing degrees of freedom to vary. Degrees of freedom is the number of independent pieces of information in our sample. If, after sampling Martian number one, we next sample his brother, then we lack independence. And in the case of our single robot, using non-independent information changes the math that we can do. But of course, this sample size of one is quite limiting. We need to sample more robots. In this case, we have sampled three robots. We have the heights for each. We begin by calculating their mean. Add them up and divide by three. The average height of these three robots is 10. Now we subtract 10 from each raw score to get estimates of deviations, which we can average for our standard deviation formula. However, these are not the estimates you are looking for. But why? What's wrong? The answer is independence. Are these estimates independent of each other? Absolutely not. Each estimate depends on the mean, which has been estimated from the scores themselves. If you know two scores and the mean, you know the remaining score. One is not independent. One is not free to vary. And let me show you. This time we sample four robots and calculate their average height. Their mean is 12. There are four robots in this sample. What is the only number that we can divide by four to get 12? The sum total of their heights must be 48. And if we know the heights of three of these robots, 15 plus 8 plus 16 is 39. Therefore, we know that the height of that fourth robot must be 9. It is the only number that works in this equation. And furthermore, because you can know the height of the last robot, the fourth of the four, n minus 1, is not free to vary. When we use a sample mean as the estimator for a population mean in our formula, we lose one degree of freedom. So how do we get back from the dark side? When we use a sample mean as the point estimator for the population mean, we calculate the standard deviation of our sample as a point estimator for the standard deviation of the population. We correct for the loss of the one degree of freedom by using sample size minus one in the formula. And there's one more problem. Now the standard error is a function of sample size. And what do we know about sample size and error? The smaller the sample size, the larger the error. And this is going to have implications for our estimations. We will not be able to use the normal distribution for our estimations. Or if we do, we're going to have wild errors. And I'm going to show you how this problem was solved by a clever beer brewer in our next video.